Hey guys, so Streaker was here and welcome back to another Thursday stream where yes, we're gonna be covering quite a few things today and hence why a bit of a late start to the stream, getting some last minute things in place. Uh but yeah, got a lot to cover today. So uh, we're covering obviously a flatline and Minerva. We're going to have a look at them. They are finished, so we can finally look at the numbers, finally look at those bots, uh, and make an assessment on what is worth going top five or top ten for this leaderboard. You know, ooh, we don't know. You know, since they changed the leaderboard rewards to five star for top five. You know, it's been an interesting change to the meta and, you know, to events in, the, in, you know, in terms of leaderboards anyway. Uh, and, you know, it's a worthy reward all of a sudden. But is the bot worth it? You know, SG uh, SG Jetfire and SG Thundercracker, personally, I don't think they're really that worth it. I don't think they were game changers. But out of this time round, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I've also got a new really, really fun team. I'd even go as far as saying maybe the most fun team I've ever played with. Uh, I just thought of this idea out of the blue and thought, I've got to have a go with this. And I've been doing, I'm playing with this team all day and adding things to it and going, well, what about this? And what about adding this? What about adding this? And I, I've just gone mental, basically. Um, but this team is looking super good that uh, I've got to share with you guys. Uh, and then we'll be looking at Bumblebee. Uh, part of the Broken series. So obviously we're going to cut this stream down into smaller videos. Uh, but looking at uh, Bumblebee and why is he so broken for a bot that's so good? Uh, and yeah, looking at what he needs to really fix him. So uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting stream. Uh, Jetpack... Uh, actually packed and uh yeah look at the news we'll go through the newsletter as normal uh and we're also going to be comparing heal course as well looking at uh, alchemist looking at raid boosters looking at reduce uh and talking uh you know which one's the best you know especially for healers uh and talk about that as well so like i said a lot of things to go through in this stream a lot of uh subjects and uh yeah uh but before we start let's see who we've got in the chat so uh, again, apologies, we're a bit late starting, uh, so there's quite a few people already in, but we've got SG Soundwave, who was first, welcome to the stream, bud, uh, Jason Rowley, who was second, yes, William Wilkerson, you were third, uh, Risky was put fifth, don't you were fourth, <laughs> uh, and Bricks Motion in fifth, uh, and then we've got uh, Mitchell VF1J, we've got Illicit Pulse, We've got MD Prime. We've got Chris Harmon, who's one of our members just joined. Thank you for joining, Chris Harmon. I really appreciate it. Uh, I will get one of the mods to add you to the uh, Discord chat uh, after the stream. So welcome. Uh, we've also got Penny Lancaster as well. We've got Chris Lewis. How's it going, brother? Uh, we've got Lord Avix. We've got Stay Puffed. How's it going, bud? Uh, my brother, Grind Time, obviously. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. I know it's a bit of a rush for you coming on from work, but appreciate it, bud. Uh, we've got Joseph Chirillo. We've got Garrett, my good friend, as well. Uh, we've got... Who else? We've got Thomas Rook. Is that a play on the uh, Thomas Cook, the um, travel agent from the UK? Probably not, but it looks like it. Uh, we've also got OS73 as well. Thanks for joining. Soldier, my brother. Uh, I think that's about it. And obviously, uh, make sure you go and check out your other content creators, guys. Especially, obviously, uh, Soldier and Grind Time are in the chat. But obviously, uh, Engineer Hoist and Devil DJ Heart and all the other content creators as well, guys. Go and support them. Go and check them out. Uh, and uh, obviously, make sure you're subscribed as well. Cool. Okay, let's go straight on to the newsletter. Bah, week grand, ah, week ninny bong. Week five of the saga. Out of six weeks, the leaderboard is creeping up, guys. It's getting ever, ever closer. So this week's uh, event is the Swarm. So uh, nice uh, Easter picture there. I'm not sure Grimlock would appreciate it. Uh, but we've got 20 Springtide Crystals. We've got uh, 2,504 Star Shards, 7,500 3 Star Shards, some Prems, plenty of Alloy and Energon, and plenty of Spark. This is what I want, though. The 150,000 Combiner Spark. That's what I need. I've just took... My defense source level 19, and I'm now leveling Volcanicus. And the reason for that is I've talked about extensively about five star Thank combiners you. and coming to the game. Uh, big shout out to Thomas Rook. Thank you for subscribing. And B Nap as well. Thank you for subscribing, guys. It's uh, really appreciated. Um, 
And yeah, so I've leveled my uh, defense up to level 19 because I think that that'll be the first five star combiner. I think I'm going out on a limb there, but I think it's either him or Volcanicus. So I've leveled Defense Sword first to 19. Now I'm going to start leveling Volcanicus up to 19. And the idea is I'll keep them both at 19. And listen, it's not going to be sprung upon us. The apes are not going to say, right, okay, tomorrow it's going to be Volcanicus because it's going to be the five star combiner. It's not going to be that, guys. We're going to get plenty of notice, maybe a few weeks. So if I can get them within a week, and then whoever they announce first, it's a week. And there you go, the level 20 and ready. Because a lot of people don't realize, like, yeah, five stars of combiners are coming. You can save all your shards and save everything in preparation. But if your combiner's not level 20, they're not going to be a five star for quite a while, guys. So whatever combiners you think are going to be the next five star combiner, get them to level 19 at least. So then you just got one week, save that 600k spark in reserve. And then once you're at level 19, you can make that die to level 20. What you don't want, guys, is put that last bit of spark you've got into defense or say, eh? because I've said so. And then the apes have gone, well, actually it's Volcanicus. And you're like, great, my Volcanicus is level 17 and I've got no spark. So try and get them at least both to 19. I'd suggest if you can, guys, uh, and then save that 600k spark when they announce which one. Could be both. But we don't know. But it's definitely going to be one of them, guys. But, yeah. Oh, and thank you, Grind Time, for the tip. Uh, really appreciated. Uh, don't forget, guys, you can uh, tip as well um, if you like the channel and want to, want to support my channel. So, yeah. Thanks, Grind Time. Really appreciated. Cool. Back on to the newsletter anyway. Less waffling. Uh, Super, Super XP has normal, normal battle zones. Uh, you see their total lives of prizes. So, yeah, premium shards and... All the walls and the spring tide crystal for every thousand points you get. Uh, there was a bit of an error in the uh, <laughs> in the newsletter. So it says 25% chance of a shark attack, uh, five of those, 25% uh, of 10 of those, a 25% chance of five star shards. So 325s equals 75. Space it mafia. Uh, but no, what it is is uh, Dale had put five star shards times 30 twice. I think someone's putting it out going, I think it's a bit of an error. You put five star shards twice. But what it is is, guys, it's five star shards and combat shards. So it's 25% chance of each, 50% uh, chance of sharks, 50% chance of either, you know, uh, five star shards or combat. So a uh, pretty decent crystal, like I said, a bit like the trick or treat crystals where it's something good or something meh. Uh, but yeah, pretty decent to get some more five star shards and combat shards. And we're finding this more and more now, pretty much every week. So uh, yeah, it's pretty decent. Uh, the Cyber Pass catch up will be here again. Uh, this uh, week, I think it is, the 18th, yeah, this week coming. So uh, if you are a bit behind in the uh, Cyber Pass, then you can uh, purchase that. Cool. Uh, and then, obviously, Minerva and Flatline, we showed them last week, but we couldn't go through them in detail. Just sort of showed the ability and said, listen, it's not finished yet. They are now finished, which is brilliant for me. I've literally got, I, I am tied to that playtest chat for quite a while. Um, and I went in there today and said, listen, well done, guys. Um, thank you for getting it complete early. It's really appreciated, you know, because a lot of guys are, even like myself, a bit on the fence on whether to go for the bot or not, for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, it's good to sort of have this time to make this mind up this weekend. And then by Monday, we can put our bid in ready and we're all ready for weekend. We know what we're getting. We know what we're letting ourselves in for. We know what bot we're getting. There's no surprises. We can get organized. Uh, so, yeah, really sort of appreciate this from the apes. And I'm, I've said in the chat that I hope this continues for every single leaderboard so that we can get prepared. So, uh, I've got to listen. I'm critical all the time of what they do, but credit where credit's due. Well done for getting this done uh, nice and early. So, yeah, thanks. Uh, then we've got, uh, we'll go through that, like I said, later. Um, my good friend Tex has done a little poster. Um, so, again, if you want to join his uh, training room, hit me up and I can add you to that. But, uh, yeah, pretty decent, like I said, all round. Uh, a good write up. Uh, then we've got myself in the content creator and soldier is in the chat, obviously. Go and check out his channel. Uh, then we've got some uh, community uh, drawings, pictures. Pretty cool. Nice collection there. Uh, and as we said, the Saga Test schedule is uh, week 5 of 6, which is 20k event. Uh, and then next week is the leaderboard. I hope you're all ready. I hope. Cool. Right. Okay. Let's go on to... Uh, Minerva and Flatline. Try again. 
Okay, cool. So we're actually going to show a uh, flat line. So obviously Minerva is exactly the same. There's no difference. Uh, but here he is. So here is flat line in all his glory. We'll check him out. We've already shown him in the uh, in the showroom, but we'll check him out again. Uh, really cool. I think flat line looks actually better than Minerva, maybe. Uh, but yeah, really cool. Uh, and then stats wise, so. Healing, 405. So if we compare that to other 5-star healers, so you can see there that Shockwave's got... Five, well, let's take this off for a minute. So Shockwave's got 361 healing. Uh, so yeah, a lot more healing from uh, Flatline. Um, then we've got 9,370 health. So again, sort of comparing that, you know... Um, Shockwave and Ratchet are very similar, so it's very similar stats, and you see there a bit less health. So you tend to find that that if a bot has more healing, uh, it has more health. So uh, yeah, uh, a little bit more, little less health, uh, but more. Uh, MD Prime asked me to remove the combat. I can remove both, so you can see it. So there, 405, and then let's take this off Shockwave just so we can see. It's still going to be less, obviously, 361. So there it is, naked, what we call, yeah? So completely free of anything. Um, but yeah, 361 healing, 10,000 health, and then um, 405 healing and 9,370 health. Uh, 2.6 speed, which is, I think that's the same, I think, as, uh, as the other healers. And now Shockwave just appeared down here. So, yeah, same sort of speed, same range, same speed, same everything like that. But, obviously, the most important thing is the ability. So, Healing Tower. So, spawn a Healing Tower that recovers 726 health to all allies in range every second for 15 seconds. It cannot be targeted nor destroyed so it is there it's not going away guys so there was a bit of worry that you could put this down it's a cost of five plus five so it is a bit on the expensive side compared to ratchet who's four plus four um but you know 726 health 15 seconds means it's giving out 10,000 health 10,000 health so you consider that 10,000 health compared to hook who's giving Four and a half thousand health. But there's a big difference there. It's 10,000 health over 15 seconds. That's the big difference. This is over five seconds. So it's 4,000 over five seconds. That'd be 8,000 over 10, 12,000 over 15. So if you want an instant boost, then obviously Ratchet is, well, Shockwave or Wheeljack is your person because they give an instant boost, which is obviously a lit. A lot less it's like two to th two or three thousand instant healing if you want quite a quick heal for more considerable amount hook is your man hook or ratchet if you want something that's going to keep your bots healed not a massive influx but it's going to be over time then obviously flatline and minerva are your people and this is the point guys this is what i like about this i've always said i want choices yeah so you've got a choice there you've got You've got Wheeljack and Shockwave. They get an instant heal. So if you need something emergency, you've got it. Yeah. If you want something that's quite considerably quite quick or five seconds, you've got it. If you want something over time, hey, you've got it. And this is what I like about this. It's something slightly different. Yeah. Personally, I still want to see my idea of a healer. I want a healer that has an attack ability. So it will heal as normal. But then when you use ability, it might do damage in an area it might stun in an area it might whatever but want something that does some sort of damage something that's not a healing ability again it gives you a choice you might think well what a healer but i don't really use heal bombs and all that my healers tend to keep my team alive i could do with some more dps more damage somewhere and that's what i'd like personally i'd like a healer that has uh some damage and that's the idea that i put forward quite a while ago and that's my uh my dream uh again just adding more choice but yeah uh looking at flatline and minerva let's put a bit of sound a bit of music on uh yeah they're looking pretty decent so let's uh let's equip them up and let's uh put them into battle Ray Booster Core. Let me know if the sounds too loud, guys. Let's put Shroot on. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, Jason Rollins asked a battle medic. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. That's, good. that's a good name for it as well. So let's just uh, add some bots in here. It doesn't really matter what, does it really? Uh, add some more gunners in there as well. Like I said, doesn't really matter who. We've not really set up. We'll put flat line. We'll put two healers in there anyway, so we can just see. And there we go. I can't hear myself talk without healing, but that sound. Is the music all right, guys? Can you hear it all right? And a couple of guys said the other week couldn't hear the music when I put it on. But uh, let me know. Let me know. Okay, so here we are. So I've sort of designed this base. Um, nothing really that special. We're just sort of messing about, really. So I've not sort of designed it for certain things. I have put the outpost out the way because it was affecting a couple of, uh, you know, like, they always get in the way, sort of, yeah. I don't want Chromia popping out and stunning on my team. So, um, yeah. Okay, so let's go. Oops. Fat fingered. So here we go. So you can see there, I'll take damage so you can see that. I'm going to put this tower right at the front. Uh, it doesn't pop outposts. Uh, we made sure that was, well, the place has made sure that was the case. But you can see that it's healing, 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 healing. He and healing some more and healing some more. There you go. Uh, you can't have two towers at a time. You can see there, if you put another one down, it will destroy the previous one. So it is just uh, one healing tower at a time. So they've kind of sort of used the, uh, you know, very similar to sort of um, the tower that Chromia and Felbat uses. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. So like I said, five plus five, so it is expensive. Um, but yeah, you know, 10,000 healing is crazy powerful. It really is. Um, so the big question is, is it worth going for? Uh, does it stack abilities? Do you mean if this healing is going on, can you put another heal bomb on top of it? Yeah, of course you can. Like you can with uh, wheel jack and shockwave and ratchet and hook. Yeah, of course. So you can add healing on top of this. Yeah, it, all healing stack regardless. Um, so yeah. So the question is. Is it worth going for? Yes. 100 million percent, yes. I'll be honest with you, next weekend is crazy busy for me. Crazy busy. And I'm at a point where I can't even run for the four star, I don't think. And I'm absolutely gutted. But I'm thinking, I'm saving my five star shards. So I might be able to um, get the actual five star in the patch more. But if you could run for top five this weekend, guys, I would. I really, honestly would. And I honestly think it's going to be a good race. SG um, Thundercracker and SG Jetfire, I was highly critical of. They didn't quite reach the bar. This guy definitely does. You've got to think, is this guy an improvement on Rook? Uh, um, sorry, Hook, not Rook. Is it improvement on Hook and Ratchet? Most definitely. Most definitely. More healing. Uh, more healing from the ability. Just more of everything. The only thing he hasn't got more of is health. But let's be honest. If you're worried about your healer's health, then you do something wrong. Because you want to take them structures out that are, that are killing your healers. So, absolutely amazing bot. And like I said, I want this guy as a 5 star without a doubt. Um, you know, text my friend, it, just, it helps out on the newsletters. I said that, uh, you know, he's running for it. I just didn't run healers. He showed me his healers at like level 50 or something. He doesn't even use them. Uh, but he wants this guy. Because he realizes how good this guy is. That if you are going to run a healer... This is the guy to run. Um, and you've got to think as well, guys, that, you know, come HU18, you're going to need all the healing you can get. And the more options you've got, the better. But honestly, this this guy is amazing. It really is. He's probably the first five-star bot leaderboard that we've had worthy, like I said, because uh, SG Jetfire uh, and SG... Um, Thundercracker weren't for me. They just weren't worthy. And I told everyone that. You know, and I'm not here to sort of perk things up unnecessarily, guys. I'll always tell the truth from my channel regardless. And uh yeah, honestly, absolutely amazing. And uh I have disappeared from the screen. <laughs> Let's try again. 
But yeah, absolutely amazing, guys, honestly. Well, my camera's working, but it's not connected for some reason, so I'm gone. <laughs> I'm vanished. It does this sometimes, it's very strange. Let's try again. Hey, and there we go. That's just disconnect from the Wi Fi, reconnect again. But yeah, cool. But yeah, let's try and. Uh, let's show them on defense. So let's, uh, let's put. Um, yeah, we can use, we can use uh, block, can't we? We can use block. Uh, for top 10, you're looking at around 70k for top 10. Uh, and top 5 is 120k. But yeah. Crush them! Unless it's a top 6 race, then it could be more. Okay, let's put block down. Deploy! So it's going to show Minerva on defense, so. so. Here we go, let's put this down. So there we go, there is Flatline's uh, healing tower, you just see there, just next to the uh, hollow. So I'm going to try and hit this uh, missile launcher here, and you can see that, look at that healing straight away. Look at the healing there, straight away on defense, this is absolutely incredible on defense guys. 15 seconds of healing in an area. So. If you could do, if you do sack and you do damage to an area and you pop this guy, that area is getting fully healed, completely rehealed. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm still trying to think of ways that this can be absolutely amazingly beneficial. I'm not sure if even the sack, if he's going to wait to put his uh, tower down. You know, if your combiner is fighting the outpost bots and that tower's there, it's going to heal its own bots. If you could, you know, if you can time it right on defense in a way. You've got to be careful you're timing that guy because that, that healing tower is absolutely incredible. Like I said, and we've got the first we've got the first healer that you can put in an outpost and actually be decent. Honestly, like I honestly think when they made this, I thought we've got to try and make this so they can put in an outpost. You know, you know, healers in the past, you know, oh yeah, they've been good, but they thought, right, what are the problem with healers? The main problem is you can't put them in an outpost. They're useless in outposts. And they thought, you know, we've got to address that. What's the best way? And honestly, uh, this is it. And uh, yeah, honestly, guys, I can't speak highly enough for this. I'm so pleased that it's more powerful than older content, which I've always said it should be. I'm pleased that it's able to work on defense. That, for me, is a game changer. Last week, it didn't work on defense. And I just said to Dale, I said, listen, I know I'm not in playtest, but just saying to you that if this doesn't work on, on defense, for me, it's another healer. It's good. But it's another healer. If this works on defense, that's a game changer. It, it really is. You know, adding 10k health in an area, um, 15 seconds, you know, 10k health is a lot for defenses. That's pretty much more than most defenses health regened again. So, you know, any damage over time abilities in that area at that time are going to be wasted. They really are. And so, yeah, like I say, guys, I, I can't speak highly of this bot enough. And if you're not running top 10 or not running top 5 and you're on the fence, I'd go for it, guys. Honestly, but prepared for a race. Because everyone is talking this bot up. Everyone I spoke to has said how good this bot is. For good reason. And so, if everyone's, speaking, if everyone's talking highly of it, it's more desirable. The top 5 will probably become a top 6 race. The top 10 will probably become a top 12 or 11 race. There's going to be a lot of competition. So, if you bid 70k, be prepared to put up 80k, guys. Honestly, it could happen. If you bid 120k for the top 5, be prepared to do 150 because it could happen. Because, honestly, this bot is absolutely crazy good. And I've, I, I, I can't say the last time I said that. I can't, I can't remember the last time that I said this bot is amazing. Rotostorm was very good. Chromio was very good. But this guy, honestly, is next level. I honestly can't speak highly of this guy enough. And uh, I need to give my hat off to the Yates and playtesters on this one because I was looking at it going, 
Oh, this sounds a bit OP to me. I'm not too sure. And I thought, well, it is over time. So it's not instant heal. So maybe that's the playoff. And then when I said, you could, uh, you know, you could be putting an outpost. I was like, wow. You know, th this guy is amazing. I, I want this as a healer. Definitely. Um, yeah. I I'd love to keep talking about it all day, how good it is. But I can't say any more other than it's amazing. Honestly, I really can't say more than that. And, uh, yeah, good luck for the leaderboard, guys. Um, I wish you all the best. Um, but, yeah, I'll be waiting to get out of that five-star batch, I think. Depending on five-star combiners, obviously. But, yeah, super pumped about this guy. Super pleased. And uh, crazy, crazy good. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, next on the hit list, I'm going to transfer to my other account. Let's just mute this first so we don't have two music going on. And just like that, there we go. We're on our bot test account. So, uh, I think I've set this up. So, we're going to look at a new team. So, I'm looking at. So, uh, you know, I'm a bit bored of my walk team. And I thought, you know, I want to try something different. And I thought, oh, I, I know I'd be pretty good. I know I'd be pretty good. Uh, I know a lot of people. You know, not a lot of people, but people can use Sensius and can use uh, Laser Optimus together. And I thought, what would be really cool is adding Rotostorm to that. You know, recently I've showed Rotostorm and how good he is. Um, and I thought, you know, Rotostorm, Spinister, add them to the mix. Uh, and yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I'll do a video about the, this the really good trio. And then I thought, oh, hang on a minute. I can add Strafe to that. I can add strafe. That's four bots that do, you know, high damage and sort of shoot them bullets out really quickly. Yep, done, dusted. And then literally half an hour before the stream, I thought, I wonder if there's any more bots that do that. Then let's go for, for combat. like, oh yeah, well, we've got Zord does damage and we've got Bomb Shark or uh, Red Heat and all those sort of combats. Um, and then I thought, oh, well, hang on, oh yeah. I was like, well, actually, yeah. Uh, we've also got Hound Vamp. Or Soundwave Hiss. It does a lot of damage. And he adds 40% damage to those builders as well. That's going to be crazy. I see a few people as well saying Impact. I didn't even think of Impact. So this is going to be ridiculous. So let's have a got Impactor as well. I don't think we've got Impact at a higher level. But we can add it if you're willing to wait. <laughs> So these are all four stars as well, guys. So, uh, you know, where's Impact? I think he's level 51. Shouldn't take too long to upgrade him. So, hey, what Impact? I've already got a market bus on someone else. So who could have put an Impact? Uh, who could, what could I put on Impact? I'll have to be soulless. <laughs> okay. Yeah, arrows put alchemist. I could do that for alchemist, but I'm not bothered about healing. It's all about the damage. So, apologies for the way. More space to be able to exclusively show new features. This is in no way connected to. Way back. Let's load it all up again. What's up in there? Are we back? Hey, we're back. Apologies, guys. I had to just uh, turn my broadcasting software on and off, and I'm not too sure what's happened here because my internet's on. Everything's working fine, but um, yeah. Very strange. Now you have two streams. Oh, God. <laughs> And now my game's not even loading. What is going on? This is bizarre. <laughs> Just close this one down. Let's try again. DDEX76 upon YouTube has been screwy all day. I'm not sure. I don't know. Is YouTube or not? I don't know. I think it's my OBS. So, um, OBS is uh, basically your broadcasting software that connects to your uh, YouTube to stream. 
and it came up then that uh, OBS is disconnected. But now my uh, my game's not connecting, which is weird. <laughs> Rooted did a self update. I don't know what's going on. I'm a big gutter. I can't show this to a team. I wonder if my main account will work. Let's have a look. Well, let's be honest. If I turn around to my uh, my alliance and say, "Listen, I can't play this weekend. I'm having some problems," they know I'm not lying. <laughs> my global account's not working either. What is going on in the world? Well, it's very hard to do a stream when there's no uh, no game to play. What's like my frames are dropping? Looking good, my end. Uh, no frames dropping, my end. Yeah. No, no frames dropped. It might be loading new. It doesn't load new. Well, no, on my test server, it's not loading content, is it? But yeah. I'm very fuzzy. It might be a connection then, but you said I've got a full connection on here, so I don't know. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. But hey, any questions in the stream while we're waiting? Because it could be waiting a while, that's right. <laughs> um. Do a song and dance while we wait. I'm not you, grind time. <laughs> yeah, it's working fine, but... Uh, I just don't know why. It's not loading up, which is weird. Because my internet's working fine. Is it biscuits or crumpets? You don't even spell biscuits right. If you're going to type biscuits, at least type biscuits right. <laughs> oh, here we go. MD Prime saves a day with a question. What are some characters not in the game that you'd like to see? And maybe abilities. Well, I think Brawn is an obvious one. Uh, Dev, Dev is definitely Brawn. Uh, but for me, Beachcomber probably number one. I'm a big fan of Beachcomber. Uh, he's got a bit of a soft spot in my heart. Uh, I had him as a Transformer as a kid. Um, oh, something come up. Hey, you're back on. But yeah, I'd definitely like to see uh, Beachcomber in the game without a doubt. Uh, but yeah, any G1 characters, to be honest with you. Uh, but definitely Brawn, definitely Beachcomber. Ability-wise, like I said, a healer uh, with an attack ability. Grind times, what, Wreck Guard, definitely. Uh, some sort of zombie um, coming back to life sort of ability. Uh, a lot of people suggested that, so that would be pretty cool as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely want those sort of things in the game. Cool! Well, we are back. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Good night. We're over. We're done. <laughs> okay, let's have a look again now. Wait, have we got it? Okay, we start this level up. Impactor. And basically, I thought, oh, I'll, just, I'll just level him up while uh, you guys are waiting for me to come back. And uh, I didn't get very far, like I said, because the game crashed. But, uh, oh, what? I had him at 10 as well. But it's not saved, obviously. MD Prize put it like to see Rampage and Depth Charge from uh, Beast Wars. I'm not a Beast Wars fan. Uh, G1 or oh, nothing for me. G1 R quits. And just to prove I was right, I need some spark now. Oh no, no. Oh, energon. There's an energon I need. See, I wasn't lying to you. Cheers sticking around though, guys. Appreciate it. But as they say, it's not a stream without complications. Cool. Let's try again. Cool. Oh, hang on. What combat? Ooh, what combat are we putting on, guys? What are we putting on? 
Something just attack, no healing. Oh, we could put a steel jar on actually. Yeah, yeah, let's put steel jar on. Five star. SG steel jar. Now, yeah, I know we've got a few couple of five star combats here, guys. Um, but we are going with all four stars, don't forget. So, uh, you know, it's a good playoff. Um, and then we want to do inventory, use some of this on impactor. Impact, where are you? There he is. Uh, we've already got Zor on. Zor's on four star and five star, so we don't need Zor on. But he's he's a good he's a good combat as well. Some good combats coming out. You got to think that are they just preparing us for HQ18? Is that what they're doing? As you sound, put strikes, but yeah, we don't want healing. We don't want healing. We want attack, 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 attack. Bots to do damage. But don't forget, SG um, Steel Jar does a uh, damage as well, don't forget. So, yeah. So, I'll use a few of these, and then we are good to go. And then we are going to have the most fun team in Transformers Hearth Wars ever seen. And it's very hard to watch this. And not be impressed, guys, honestly. And now we're adding an impactor. It's scary. Air Raid is a good shout, to be fair. I could have put Air Raid one. I think we'll stick with Steel Jar now, honestly. But uh, Air Raid is a good shout. And there we go. Last one. Use it anyway. We can waste XP when we're on the test server, can't we? We're not losing anything. I can just ring Dale and go, Dale, give me some more. Okay, you wanted it, guys. You wanted it. You got it. There we go. Couple healers in there to keep them alive. Let's do this. The most fun, scariest team in Transformers Earth Wars. I actually had this on the uh, sets kind of count, so the bases are a bit more clustered, so it's going to be a bit of a big difference, I think, on this. But hey, let's go with it. We've also got outpost bots in this as well, so. But we'll, do, we'll try and split them up, actually. We'll go like this. Cool. Let's set him off first. Let's set him off. Let's set him off. Let's do some damage there. Damage there. Let's do some damage there. Woo! <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. Crazy. Let's go again. Lots of splits, it's not as fun. Let's get rid of this Titan now. Crazy good. I oh, don't forget guys, this is a team of four stars as well, don't forget. Four stars as well, to be fair. Oh, I can easily do this. Let's just let's, let's bring these in. Let's stop them splitting because obviously this game's this it's a bit unrealistic. This base having everything. I put them out there because uh, I was just to uh, move things out of the way when I was testing uh, something else, which we'll talk about later. But we can add these back in again. The more closer it is, the better it'll be. To be honest with you, so let's just bring this back in again. I'm going. What we got? Oh yeah, we got we got two healers there. That's why. Because we've got uh, healers on defense, haven't we? There we go. Let's be more fun now. 
This would be more fun. Let's put that there. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. Well, they walk. So one of those chain impact special from laser to see point shots. Con. No, they they won't. They won't change the ability now. It's too good anyway to change. Because the amount of people invested in it, be, you can't change abilities this sort of late, really. Right, no more split. Right up the middle. Yo, Joe! Hound Vamp, Laser Optimus. Then we're gonna do a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of that. Use all the ability points. Woo! <laughs> Look at that! That area is gone. Gone. And now we get stunned by uh, Chromia. So this is why I moved it out on the con account. I think my man got a bit overkill at the beginning. <laughs> Is it tracked war worthy? Oof, I don't know. It was five stars? I don't know, maybe. That's five stars, obviously, definitely. But you talk about four stars here. So. I mean, again, I could set my team up for to take away Chromia and things like that, but Chromia's going to cause problems, so, I mean, we could just walk this beginning bit. I was going to take it proper seriously. Let's take it proper serious then, okay? Proper serious, only four stars. Uh, Brick Motions put make a team like Tiger Hawk and Swoop and Afterbreaker. Uh, maybe a good idea for another video. I know that um, the hour DJ Howard talked about mini and team. Uh, how much he uses that? So that'd be fun. But uh... yo, Joe! Concentrate your fire. Let's uh, let's do this properly then. Let's take it seriously. Get rid of this shock tower and then we'll go for it. Oh no, what's that? What does hit us? Okay, now we're getting air now. I can't even get close with the uh, laser optimus. And there we go, we take it seriously, it can't be done. We don't get the healer that even max out either, so but yeah. Crazy good team.
crazy fun team, like I said. Just absolutely smashing the base, but you're not going to run out of time with this team, I'll tell you that much. Uh, is it doable in Prime League? It's not a balance, not a walk team, is it? Because they do sort of like, some run off ahead, some stay back, and the healers are running all over the show, so it's not suitable for a walk. Uh, they're all five stars, yeah, but uh, we don't have Hound Vamp as a five star. We don't have uh, Strafe as a five star or Rotor Storm, so... Uh, I think Strafe's not quite as effective as the rest, but it's still fun to put in. You probably put Swoop in there instead. Depends on uh, anti-air. But, absolutely crazy good, guys. Absolutely crazy fun. In fact, I'm going to have a look at him. <laughs> I just love using this team, honestly, I really do. But uh, the healers are... What's Ratchet at? Well, Ratchet's maxed out. Let's put a... Hang on. Here we go. Let's really go for it. There we go. Wheel Jack is he the same set up? Let's put wrong on him as well. If we're gonna go for it, let's go for it. I think this time what we're gonna do is on impactor. On impactor we're gonna put where is it? This guy so we can take out that shock tower. There we go. There we go. Shall we do it? Shall we go hard? Let's do it. Let's do it. So we've gone hard mode. Let's see how it goes. But if I'm not mistaken, this hard mode is actually hard. <laughs> Yo, Joe! Roger. I want to try and keep these guys for later on. Because we're going to need them. Let's get rid of that tower now. Keep getting stunned every time I got to use the stunned. I thought I got rid of that tower. Right, here we go now. Here we go. No messing about now. Here we go, guys. Oh, we've lost someone. Someone's gone. Ooh, can we get through on hard mode? Someone's stopping us. Who's that there? Rhinox. I just realised the defending uh, Titans there, that's what it is. <laughs> I didn't battle with the Titan. <laughs> I'm going to get this, guys. I'm going to beat this. One last time. One last time.
And don't forget, there's no combiner either, guys, as well. Don't forget, we're going no combiner here against a maxed out base as well. My base. We maxed out bots in the outpost. Max five stars. So, if you consider that. But remind me. What's a Use your Titan. <laughs> okay. What was stunning us in the middle there? I got stunned for ages in that middle. I don't know what it was. Yo, Joe! Is it Death Pulse? Oh, I've got Death Pulse everywhere. That's why. Let's get rid of that Death Pulse. <laughs> I set a base up from a Death Pulse base. What an idiot. <laughs> That's why I was stunned all the time. Yeah, we go to the out strafe. So we're not getting a. That should make a difference now. Here we go. Honestly, my stream is full of gremlins tonight. <laughs> And let's speed that up as well. There we go. Oh, I was going to say finish with 14 then nearly. Well, yeah, so the question is, is it Prime League hard worthy? Eh? If you manage it right, yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> another victory for G.I. Joe. But yeah, honestly, I love that team. Absolutely fun to use. Just It's a bit like the raid. We're just spamming abilities constantly and just hitting these abilities constantly, constantly, constantly. But I think that for HQ18, it's probably even more valuable the more points you get. You can see there towards the end, we're running out of points. But if HU18 comes, I imagine they'll up the points. Uh, the ability points at the start of the battle. And the maximum as well. Uh, maybe. Who knows? But yeah, it could be uh, super, super interesting. Cool. Okay, on to the next subject. So, it's been a bit of a talk in our uh, our chat, our playtest chat. Um, no, sorry, not playtest chat, our Alliance chat. Um, over something that Tex posted in the newsletter. So, Tex is a good friend of mine, and we talk quite often about things and whatever in the game. And obviously, he appears in my stream doing the uh, ratings. And so, uh, you know, he knows a thing or two about the game. And so, uh, he put it today that uh, Alchemist is good on a healer. So I was like, they're going, really? Have I missed something? And someone in our side chat said, uh, oh, it's, um, no, it doesn't work. Stop the connection in a minute. Sorry, guys. Gremlins are back. Oh, we're back again. Apologies. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Tex said that, uh, you know, Alchemist uh, works on a healer. So I thought, uh, I've got to, uh, I've got to test this out. I've got to see. So I've done some tests, and we'll, uh, we'll let you be the judge of this as well. So, so we've got Ratchet here. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna take uh, everything off Ratchet, and we're gonna test him out. What we call naked. So I'll take everything off. So he's got no self heal at all. Okay, and then what we're going to do is, we're even going to go to our Titan. When it loads up. Oh, I just remembered something I need to remind everyone about Minerva and about uh, Flatline as well. They have their own passive uh, heal. So I've gone to my Autobot account, but I can show you Minerva there. So 
I'm going to Minerva and going to Bio. She has Brock blah, blah, blah. Minerva restores 2.3% of her health every 5 seconds as well. So she has her own Rejuvenate Core, guys, as well. Just to add that to it as well. Just to make it a bit better. Why not? Like I said, better in every way, honestly. Okay, cool. So we're going to take this off. Uh, try something else, was I? So there you go. You can see we've got no healing abilities there. Uh, we've got nothing on the healer. And then we're just gonna we'll keep that on. That's fine. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. So, we've got how on that. No, um, I'm trying to make sure there's no healing involved in any of these. So, Amalgamus is. So, Impactor. Uh, yeah, Impactor. So, let's put Impactor down. Put Ratchet down. So, you see there, no healing to Ratchet. Let's wait to get hit a bit. Let's get some range. So you see there, look, so Ratchet is getting no healing at all. So you see here in the combat, that's the combat healing there. The green numbers there uh, for Impactor. But uh, Ratchet's taking damage and not healing at all. Yeah. So we know, we know already from testing, we know that right now, nothing is making Ratchet heal. So we're going to put Alchemist on him and give it a go. Let's go Ratchet. But it's Alchemist. There we go. So, the other DJ Heart has put, the only way that would work if the game is resting is healing for damage. So, that's the main point. So, when you talk about healing per second, damage per second, they're the same sort of, um, same stats in a way. So, uh, when your healer detached from healing, so when your healer's got nothing to heal, if you put Ratchet down for a solo, he will do that as DPS. So, if your Ratchet's 450 healing per second, if you drop Ratchet on his own, it will do 450 DPS. But is DPS the same as healing? That is the big question. And put Ratchet down. So, you can see there, he's healing. Way to take some damage. And you see there, it took some damage there. But sadly, he's not healing himself. Sadly. So I know that Tex thought that. And I've talked to him about it previously. I was like, how, how would you get these numbers to work? Uh, basically, because there's so much healing involved in terms of Minerva and Flatline. Uh, he just thought it was, sadly. But I just want to confirm that, sadly, Alchemist doesn't work on healers. Um, at first, when I heard about it, I thought, this could be really interesting. The fact that you can use Ratchet's Heal Bomb to hopefully heal himself. That'd be crazy good because if you're using the healing uh, per second to, you know, work Alchemist, then sure, his ability does as well. Um, but uh, sadly, it's not. Um, and how did your heart has put so the, heal, the core work wants to heal on its own? Um, I will test it out. I think I tested it. I think it didn't, actually. Um... But we could try it out. But this sort of started me spurring me on to wonder about, you know, which healing cores are the best. You know, and we could talk about Alchemist, we could talk about Rejuvenate, uh, we talk about Ray Boosts for healers and uh, the advantages of that. Um, and yeah. And there's another core as well. I can't remember what core it was now. Ratchet. So I'll put Ratchet down. And you see there, he is doing his damage per second, 466, which is what his uh, healing per second is. Let's fast forward it. And he gets in range. And you see there that now he is healing 
for 15% of his damage done. I think it's actually 20% now, I think, actually. But, uh, but you see there that the Alchemist is working now because uh, he's actually doing damage. So it is only off damage. But then as soon as we add Impactor to that, the healing now stops. So yeah, Alchemist sadly only works on uh, damage. So the big question there, like I said, is uh, we wanted to talk about um, some cores and talk about how which one's best out of sort of Rejuvenate, out of a uh, Ray Booster, Alchemist, uh, and even the G1 cores. So uh, that was a sort of a uh, conversation what I wanted to talk about. So let's have a look at uh, Alchemist first. So. Alchemist, like we just said, uh, we can only equip that now. We don't be using that, do we? So, Alchemist uh, heals you for all of your attacks, uh, 15%. So, this includes abilities as well. Um, so, you've got to think, if you're thinking about Alchemist, uh, you'll best put an Alchemist on a bot that does a massive amount uh, of damage with their ability. So, you are talking the likes of Laser Optimus, you're talking about Jazz, maybe. Uh, you are talking about Impactor. Yes, you could put Volatile Mixture on Jazz to do more damage, which is great as well. Um, but, you know, uh, the main thing, like I said, is... Uh, the amount of damage that the ability does. So when you think about Alchemist, guys, think about high damage. That's what you've got to think about. Because you can put on any bot, let's be honest, but most bots have similar DPS. They've all got between 600 to 1,000-ish. So yeah, you are better on a high DPS bot as well. Um, but like I said, 15% of 1,000 is still, you know, 150. 15% of 600 is still, you know, 900. So... Uh, is that right? 900 is 15% of 600. 15% of one of 10,000 is 1,500. So you're getting 600, you know, healing, uh, you know, out of every five seconds, I think it is something. Anyway, the point I'm making, guys, is that, you know, DPS is quite important, but the big one is the ability. So Skylinks as well, huge damage, maybe even six gun. All these bots that do huge amount of damage. You know, putting it on the likes of like, you know, streetwise or bots or tracks is it's pretty useless really. Because it's only going to heal that bot. And that's the you only know, 15%. And that's where we go on to the next one. So if you think about Alchemist, think of high damage bots. Uh, on to the next one. So next one is rejuvenate. So obviously comparing the G metals if we can. So, this restores 3% of health every 5 seconds. So, this is determined by high HP. So, where Alchemist is dependent on how much damage you're doing, this is dependent on health. So, if you've got a bot with low health, so it's like Rotostorm or like Healers, uh, Rejuvenate, 3% of health is not that much. So, you know, 3% of 10k is 300. They're going to heal for 300 health every 5 seconds. Where if you put this on Rook, for example, you're getting 900 healing every 5 seconds. So, very high health tanks, Rejuvenate is really good on. And that's what I personally put it on. I put Rejuvenate on a high level tank, a high health tank. Rook, maybe even Impact is better cause than that, but you get the idea what I'm talking about. I'm talking Rook, Laser Optimus, you know, Rhinox, bots with like 30k health as 5 stars. That's what you're looking at, guys. High health bots. Um, and the next one we've got is G1 cores. So looking at a heal G1 core, like I said, we look at other cores as well, and there's lots of G1 cores, but let's just look at heal uh, ratchets, for example, and compare that to a raid booster, uh, and the difference between a lot of them as well, in terms of healing and heals. Uh, so G1 ratchet uh, increases the power of your heal beam by 17.4%, and gives you a 25% speed boost. So the important bit is the 17.4%. Um, then if we look at Medic Core, so it's not maxed out, but I believe it does around the same, around 16%, 16.5%. So, yes, a G1 Core is slightly better than a Ray Booster. But I've got my G1 Core that's at level 1. And the question you got to ask is, well, why, why would you run a G1 Core? Why would you not level G1 Core? You're getting more healing. And here's a big one. I don't remember why I left it at 17 either. So this is it's level 17. So once we upgrade it, try to upgrade it there. Have I got any cores? I think I have. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five. Five G metals. That's G metal cores as well, guys. For a half percent. Let's go again. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten G metals. Eleven, twelve. So twelve G metals just to get it from level seventeen. Just to get it from level seventeen. Once you start adding in every single level, the advantage that you get from a G1 healing core over a normal uh, ray boost, it's not that beneficial. You might say, yeah, well, you got the speed boost as well, a 25% speed boost. But that's for when they're sort of moving between their healing. And let's be honest, if you're using healers normally, it's for a walk team. And if your walk team split up that much and your healers got to run around, but then you failed your walk, let's be honest. I'm not a fan of cores where you're sort of planning around something to go wrong. You know, I've said that, you know, uh, in terms of combats, that uh, I'm not a big fan of... I forgot his name. Lionizer, for example. And I know that Tex likes him on his gnaw and I get for the added damage. This is the bit I don't like, though, is a robotic lion. And the reason I don't like that is that you're depending on your bot dying. I never plan for my bots to die. I want to finish the, the match with the battle with eight bots. So why would you sort of bank on losing a bot? So I don't sort of don't like that. I don't like the fact that yeah, you're using a G1 core thinking, well, if my bot split, that's going to be good. Don't let your bot split. It's plain and simple like that, guys. Um, but yeah. And then, yes, MD Primer said Amalgamous as well. Amalgamous is more around damage. So, um... Because I'm moving base round, I can't fight it now. Look at that Amalgamous. So Amalgamous is more, again, for a high damage bot. Because it increases all damage, including abilities, by 15%, which is brilliant. It only restores 1% health every half a second. So it's 2% health every second. Uh, over 5 seconds, that's 10% health. So it does mount up, but, you know, it's only when in alt mode as well. So Amalgamous is... Good for healing, but it's more about the damage. I wouldn't say that Amalgamous is solid a healing core, but I'm more talking about... I want to sort of concentrate on healers, really, in a way. So, when would... So, Ray Booster. The reason I put Ray Booster on a medic, on a healer, is because it increases the healing to other bots. You could add a Rejuve to that healer, and that will keep that healer alive. So, the question you've got to ask yourself is, do I want to keep my healers alive? I don't want to keep my other bots alive more. And that's the question you've got to ask yourself. Then you've got to talk about Micronus. And Micronus is an interesting one. So Micronus heals in an area. So do you put Micronus on your healers? Do you put it on your gunners? Do you put it on your tanks? And that's the big question again. So if you put it on your tanks, you're trying to keep your tanks alive. And that's what I do. I want extra healing going to my tanks. I want Micronus on my tanks. I want Stripes on my tanks. Healing them. Keeping them alive. Because if any bots take, try to take damage from me, it's my gunners, it's my jets, and my healers with the, uh, you know, mortar cores, the uh, target protocol. So I will use a heal bomb on my healers and on my uh, gunners. If you put, um, if you put my Cronus on your healers, it'll keep your healers and gunners alive better, but your tanks will die quicker. Now, if you use a heal bomb on your tanks and gain 4,000 health, it's not as considerable. 4,000 health to healers and gunners will bring them fully back to life. 4,000 health to your tanks is about an eighth of their health. Something like that. A sixth of their health. So, you know, it's not as considerable. So, I prefer to use ratchet heal bombs on my gunners and on my healers. And concentrate on healing my tanks. But listen, everyone's got their sort of different angle on this uh, and how they do it. But I will just make a solid decision. Do you want to heal your tanks more? Or do you want to keep your healers alive more? But you've got to sacrifice one user. You can, you can try and find a balance if you can. But that's sort of where you've got to decide. If you want to heal your tanks better and keep your tanks alive. For me, that's going to protect your bots anyway. You know, watch out for target protocol or the cores like that. But keep your tanks alive. It's very rare that my tanks die. Or even lose more than half health really. Because of that reason. That all my healing is pushed forward onto my tanks. To keep everyone ahead and everyone alive. And other people, like I said, yeah, that you could put on, you could put, uh, you know, 
rejuve on your healers. You could put my Cronus on one of your healers. Uh, things like that. And uh, yeah, that'll keep your healers alive. But, uh, you know, for me, that's what Ratchet Heal Bombs are like. But then I suppose that will save your ability points, maybe, if you can keep them alive and also keep your tanks alive by, you know, using wrong and such as that. Again, there's not a right and wrong answer for this. It's all down to opinion. But like I said, guys, when you're sort of choosing cores for your healers uh, and cores and where to put Micronus in your team, think carefully of where you're going to put the Micronus. You can put it in your gunners in the middle. But if your tanks walk off, your healers start healing them, the Micronus is not as effective. You've got to think, though, if you put it in the middle, it might catch both. If you could keep your team totally compact, totally together, putting Micronus on a gunner, it's absolutely brilliant. But then... You're going to lose volatile mixture or something like that. And you've got to maybe put it on a bot that like, tracks something that doesn't have an attack ability. Uh, has a passive ability. Uh, or a support ability as such. A support bot. Um, so, yeah. Like I said, guys. Decide. Do you want to heal your tanks? Do you want to heal your healers? And then, from there, Ray Booster to heal your tanks. And then, Rejuve maybe to heal your uh, healers. But yeah, but yeah, like I said at the beginning, like I said, sadly, uh, Alchemist doesn't work on healers. Sadly, Alchemist for your high uh, damage ability bots. Uh, Amalgamus, which says it's sort of mention it. Again, that's on high damage bots, but it's not as much healing really. Um, Ray Booster on your healers. You want to heal your tanks. Rejuve on your healers if you want to uh, keep them alive. You could also put Alpha Trial on really if you want to. If you want to keep that core in there somewhere, but you're going to lose both there. You're going to lose the healing ability um, for your tanks and lose the healing ability for your healers. So, do you want a bit less healing for something else? Personally, I'd like to put um, Alpha Trans somewhere else. But, uh, yeah, again, it's, a very, it's about balancing your cores, guys, and choosing priorities. But, yeah, cool. Okay, next on the list... So part of my uh, Broken series, like I said, and uh, I want to talk about Bumblebee. Now, when this guy was a four-star, he was pretty awful, let's be honest. Um, but, um, you know, when he came out as a five-star, he got buffed. His ability got buffed. We said, yeah, he needs to sort of slow down a bit. Um, and, yeah, his ability needs to increase more and more damage. The stun's great, but it needs more damage. And Space did a great job of him. I am super pleased with my five-star Bumblebee. He's in my war team. But he's got a major problem. Major problem. Which is the one reason that makes him awful. And we're going to talk about that. So we've got a uh, flak on Bumblebee, which gives him his range. So I'll put Flak down, and you can see here that it's attacking with Flak's range. All is good. We'll put Rook down here. And we're going to pop this outpost with Rook. You see Bumblebee's just firing away, keeping out of distance. It's all good. And now Bumblebee's going to engage the, the outpost bots, and all of a sudden... It's hard to see with Chromia. <laughs> All of a sudden, he gets stunned and ruins the stream. This is why I hate Chromia. Especially in uh, content creating. It's just ruined so many things in a stun lock. It is far OP. We've got Rock in there. Right, we can go again. Wide up and um, rust dust. Well, you'll see, it's, it's not for the reason you may think. I'll show you later. Let's try again. So, again, Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Hitting out as normal. I'm going to pop Rock down. I'm going to pop this outpost. So you see there, attacking with Flak, like we said. Nice and ranged. Keeping out of any damage range. Flak doing its job. And now, you can see now, he's engaging the outpost bots. And all of a sudden, Flak's gone. And now he is meleeing. 
the bot. And you can see there that he's got in serious trouble. He should be behind here somewhere. He should be back here firing on this bot. But instead, he's attacking. And this is a massive, massive problem when it comes to combiners. Because as soon as that combiner pops and your bot's going to battle, he runs ahead towards the combiner. And the combiner targets him first. And so because of that, he dies. If you ever get near an outpost bot, Bumblebee is dead. Write him off as gone. It's so hard to keep him alive. You can drop heal bombs, whatever you want. He doesn't save him. He, he runs to his death, sadly. And sadly as well, it isn't a scout problem. And just to prove, this is not like something that Bumblebee does. This is not his, what he should happen. This is a bug in the game that's been around far too long. So if you had, we'll add a uh, Cliff Jumper in here. We'll add Perceptor, Rostos, Bumblebee. So they've all got uh, Top Shot or Flak on, you can see there. We'll add Rook at the beginning. So save again. We'll pop the outpost. See there, they're all staying back. All keeping their distance, all doing lots of damage. All in a safe place. And then... Oops. Bumblebee runs off. And you see there that everyone else is keeping their damage. Everyone else is sat right back. Look, in a line. Bumblebee. Nope. Bumblebee is running off to his death. You can see there, look. He's run off. Starts milling the uh, outpost bot. It's pretty much acting like a tank. And you can see there, look, everyone's at full health of the pocket. No healers. Everyone's sat back. Right back there. Not taking any damage. And that's his big problem. He said he dies too easy because of a bug. You know, Flak sort of disengages for some reason. But no other combat, no other, um, no other scout does that. You know, Clifton don't do that. And Chromia and whoever else, you know. Like Silbot said, he become a tank all of a sudden. Yeah, he disengages from Flak in a way and just starts sort of meleeing bots, but he hasn't got the health to do that. You know, he's not. He's not a tank by any means. He's still got 15,000 health. You know? And so he sort of a need to dress it. And we sort of do these sort of broken videos to emphasize that, you know, and get the, the sort of, uh, you know, get the knowledge out there that this is broken. You know, this is not fair on people. This sort of needs fixing. Bumblebee could be such a good bot. And for this reason, time and time again, I'm thinking, I'm not too sure I could put him on my team. It's a liability. If I lose any bot, it's going to be him when he encounters the outpost bots. And so, you know, this needs to be fixed sooner or later. And I'm pretty sure it's been brought up to the apes. Um, maybe they don't see it as an issue. I, d I don't know, but it definitely is. You know, it's definitely broken. It's not work as intended. If all the scouts did this, then, yeah, fair enough. I'd agree. Um, but, you know, it, sadly not. He's the only scout that does that. So, we definitely need to look at this. We definitely need to address it uh, sooner than later. And make Bumblebee the bot that he should be and make him decent again. You know, he's got a great ability, great cost. The only thing not to like, he's got his bug where he goes to melee. And like I said, like, like Silbot said, becomes a tank all of a sudden with 15k health. So, uh, yeah, he needs to sort of address this and, uh, you know, Make it right, I hope. Uh, Silbot's put, they'll fix it when more scouts... When they do more scouts, you mean? Uh, well, they have talked about a a scout G1 core, maybe, or a scout core. Uh, I mean, hopefully, they'll look at this at the same time, put it on a list, because uh, it, definitely, it definitely needs looking at. Like I said, it's a liability. Um... Bricks Motion's put, does it do the same with Top Shot? Does it do the same with any combat? Any combat you put on him, he disengages that combat. So the combat, sort of, when he, when he attacks outpost bots, it's like he hasn't got any combat on. And he starts doing his stun again. And that's all well and good. Like I said, he gets that sort of stun gun out. Um, and starts doing the flips and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's all well and good. If he wanted to do that, you wouldn't put a combat on him. It's like he has a combat half a time with attacking defences. And then the combat disappears all of a sudden. And as soon as the outpost is dead, it starts to flak again. 
But by that point, it's too late because he's in the middle of everything then. He doesn't need that range. You know. Uh, risk is put, yeah, but won't be a suicidal, hence why he's not on my war team. Yeah, listen, if you can manage that, if you can manage that part of him, he's amazing. I want to say top 10 bots in the game for me. That good. But he's not because of that. That's a problem. Uh, what else? Uh, Victor starts to put Bumblebee. Uh, I have a comp like, <laughs> he's like, uh, I have a comp but maybe I should uh, throw it away and punch Soundwave. <laughs> That's pretty much it, yeah. Uh, MD Prime's put, I've definitely had Perceptor and Rustos run ahead across the map. Uh, to another outpost spot. Um, Felbat does that too. Well, I've just obviously just tried that with uh, Chromium and everyone else. And uh, I've shot again. It doesn't work with anyone else, sadly. It only really works uh, with Bumblebee. There is obviously a pathing issue with scouts sometimes, especially if you don't have a uh, flak on. But, um, yeah. One shall stand, one shall fall. Deploy. So there we go. So we got Perceptor, Rose Dust, and B. Chromia, Cliff Jumper. All behind, you can see there. Just shut one more time. And then you can see B there starts running ahead. See, these are still jumping, but you've still got that range of flak. And Bumblebee. It's right in the middle there. Look at these guys still at the back. Chromia's obviously there because she's firing at Rook, they're firing at Hollow. Bumblebee. Dead! Like I said. Sort of proves there, guys, that, you know, all these combats, all these scouts are sort of staying back and flipping backwards and keeping the range. And Bumblebee just runs to his death. Sad but true. Okay, on to my main account. So what is happening there? And while I'm waiting for it to load, competition time! Okay, we've got some codes to give out. So, the first five people to put this uh, answer in the chat are going to get a Sunstreak Water Stash Crystal. Are you ready? Okay. So, earlier on, I did a, a team of six bots. And someone suggested a addition to that team. What bot did I add to that team to add it to a seventh of my crazy, crazy good team? What was the last bot that I added from a suggestion from the stream? Put it in the chat. When a Sunstreaker was a Sash Crystal. First five. Go. Oh, we've been attacked. I know, I haven't got my uh, my shield up. Let's give it a go. Oh, he's tried doing using a two-star cup. And failed. Now he's going to try using uh, Windblade. Not the best idea ever. Try doing a sack. I don't know why he's using a two star cup. He's using a three star team. He's got for resources. I don't know what he's doing there. He's trying to use his titan to defeat mine and then take half the base out with his titan. We see a lot of that with, um, with some people nowadays. Let's fast forward. And here we go. This is where now. This should be my broken video. This is crazy. Watch. Then he just waits. I think he's using two star cup for time. So by using a two star, it dies quicker. And so I'll buy that. It means he's got uh He's got uh more time.
10 points to try in. There we go. Worth for try though. <laughs> Uh, Chris Trudens put your base has too much on the side to distract the Titan. Mm -hmm. I've always said about symmetrical bases and whether it should be a case or not. And we talked about that in our last um, our last uh, base rinsing stream about you know not needing to be symmetrical anymore. And there's a reason why all the high HP buildings are one side compared to the other side. Good reason for that, guys. And that is it. Okay, where are we up to? So. Let's have a look at the answers. Who were the first five in the chat? Let's have a look. So, Bricks Motion, MD Prime, Super Scott, Penny Lancaster, and Action Whale. Congratulations, guys. Hit me up on Discord saying, hey, was our I put Impactor as my answer? I want a Sunstreaker, was a Stash Crystal? And we'll give you a crystal. Congrats. So we finally reached 25,000 four star shards and we're now at 10,000 shards for our five star crystals. And before we get it in the chat, no, we're not pulling them today. We're saving them. We're saving them until at least the new batch comes out. Maybe until five star combiners come out, which could be August. By then, I want to have at least five pulls by then. So we've got two in about two months, so it's probably doable. Uh, we've got, what, four, eight, nine, ten. Pools, we've got another 1,800 there, so we've got about two and a half, uh, two and a half, five stars there. Uh, just checking the chat. Yep, yep, saving our shit, saving our shards up. Cool, been doing well in wars recently. Uh, we got a couple of hiccups though. Uh, but in terms of war history, uh, S7 victory. I've had some good scores recently, so they're getting better. Just beat uh, Forge Cybertron. Um, then we obviously faced uh, Forge Cybertron previously. Uh, just lost out. Um, and yeah, I like the new method of staying in Prime League now. We're not going down to Cyber, you know, and beating on teams lower than us. So I like that. Um, Sector 7 there, we just sort of beat as well. So, uh, yeah, Psyops is doing well recently. Uh, we picked up where we, uh, you know, where we left off. And uh, I'm finally getting there, I think, to be in a top team again. Uh, top 5. So, yeah, doing quite well. Uh, been smashing Zen Farming, got about 420k uh, Zen this week. So that's pretty good. Uh, going up in medals and yeah, doing really well. Uh, my affiliate's got. Uh, how did you get so many crystals? Uh, literally just being in the top alliance. Uh, obviously spending on bundles as well. Uh, and completing events, basically. If you complete events, uh, don't forget the battle pass. Uh, you get uh, 1500 five star shards um, for completing the battle pass or getting to that stage. Uh, I'll get there eventually, but I'm not too fussed about that, really. Um, but, uh, yeah, with the uh, instruction of five-star shards, so I've got 3,000 five-star shards over the last two months, thanks to the Battle Pass. Um, so that's helped a lot. And then you get a four-star crystal pretty much every event, let's be honest. So our shards like that. Uh, it's just a matter of just saving them. Just saving up. I mean, but I'll be honest with you guys, there's no point in saving them at, your, at most people's level. Um... I'd say the only reason I'm really saving is because I, I don't really need anything in the game right now. Um, my team is pretty much, uh, you know, maxed out. We've got uh, Rhinox there. These are all my team. Uh, we've got Lazer Octopus 6311. He's the latest addition to my team. We've got Blaster maxed out pretty much. We've got Sea Spray pretty much maxed out. Um, Bumblebee, like I said, he's at 6411 even. Um, we don't use the liter, but even the liter's at 63.11. And I don't even use it at all, apart from uh, Zen farming. Uh, Rook 64.11. We've got Jetfire 65.11, pretty much maxed out. We've got Ratchet, pretty much maxed out. We've got Blade, pretty much... Blade? Blades, pretty much maxed out. We've got Wheeljack, uh, 63.11. Uh, we've got Smoke Screen at 64.10. 
uh, and that's pretty much all my war team really so you know once you, you're getting a 300 in most wars and your team's almost maxed out I don't like maxing my team out I want something to do on you know lead world weekends and put some more XP into these sort of bots um, and once you're doing well in wars and you know and that's what you focus on and your bots nearly maxed out you've not got much to do really you know I don't need any five star bots right now um, you know so I'm just saving my shards and see what happens because if I, what I don't want to do guys I don't want to go and chase hot rod say and then in six months time the new combiners come out and I'm left short so right now I'm fine as I am I'm set I'm in a good place and I can plan forwards you know once you get to that level it gets a lot easier um, but yeah, we're saving our shards because it's still on the fence whether you have to collect five star shards like a Bionis or or five star bots even or whatever. We've got no clue how five star like is going to come. But I know how important Omega Supreme is in top wars. Super, super, super important. Super, super, super good. So if I can get a second or third five star combiner, that's going to improve my war scores again for HQ 18. And it's going to be so, so important. Again, another thing that's really important is going to be uh, leveling your bot so from what the apes have said is they're gonna raise the cap from 65 to 67 or 68 so they're gonna raise it two or three levels maybe uh, and then to get a bot from 64 to 65 uh, is 48 million XP so you can bet 65 to 66 will be about 65 70 mil probably and then 66 67 would be 100 mil so you can talk about talk about 250 million to get a bot from 65 to 68 it's gonna take you a while it really is and that's why already i'm starting to prepare for that and that's why i've got these you know i'm trying to save up about 200 mil if i can get 200 million uh xp in the bank I can literally get a bot from 65 to 68 if possible. If 67, then that's pretty much easily done. If it's 68, I can max that bot out straight away. I can get it right up there. The question is which bot to choose. That's the hard bit. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm uh, sort of doing. Is planning for HQ18. I'm getting ready for it now. Getting prepared for it now. So if you're in Prime League and you're at that sort of level, this is what I would advise to do, guys. Especially if you're doing well in Wars. Is plan plan far ahead. Man, if they put five star Magna Boss and five star Compton would be great, but I don't think they'll be coming next. I really don't. I think the next ones will be. Uh, like I said, I got Volcanicus going to eighteen. I'm gonna put Volcanicus to nineteen. Um, but uh, I think this guy'll be next. That's why he's at nineteen. So my plan again. Is before HQ 18 comes is get Volcanicus to 19 so I might just have enough com combine us back after this weekend maybe um, take him to 19 after he's finished upgrading a week um, maybe with a if there's any combine spark in the leaderboard then I will um, and then I'm then saving up um, 600k so that as soon as they announce five star combiners if I've got one of them is a five star or whichever one it is or whatever i've got 600k in the bank ready to upgrade one of them and i'm ready to go but yeah we've got, also got a uh, comfort 19 ready to go uh, and then after that magna boss is going to be 19 again put him to 19 as well um and Vichy Sassy, but watch this make five star Otto's maximus the best combiner in the game but they might make them all five star at the same time maybe we'll have a choice maybe we won't Maybe you'll need the bots. Maybe you just need a. You know, I've talked about it in the past about a. Uh, maybe a. Um, uh, the Enigma combination. And, you know, using that to some effect to make your bot a 5 star. But I'd want to see a 5 star ability as well. Not just raising the HP and DPS. I'd want to see a 5 star ability as well. Or at least be able to use the 4 star ability twice or something. I don't know. Because you can't currently really. You can't use the 4 star ability twice on most combiners. So uh, there needs to be something else other than just raising the HP and DPS. There needs to be something decent. But, um, but who knows where it's going. Who knows. But yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. We're in a current war against Force Resurrection. We'll see how this war goes. 
But uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. And uh, that is it for today, guys. So uh, apologies for the few connection issues. But uh, appreciate everyone for staying tuned in. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. Like I said, plenty of videos coming. I'm going to split this uh, sort of stream down into videos as well. But uh, plenty more uh, content coming. We've got the um, the next uh, video from me and Tex where we are rating combats. That's going to be in two parts. So we are going to post part one this weekend. So watch out for that. Um, and yeah, lots more content coming. So if you want to catch the content, guys, and uh, you want to uh, check it out, then uh, the only way to, uh, to do that is subscribe. That's the best way. So you get notifications of my streams. You might be one of the first in the chat and win a Sunstreak or was a Stash Crystal. Or uh, you might just see any post that I post and uh, win yourself some loot in some other ways. So, yeah. Okay, guys. So, I really appreciate everyone tuning in. Like I said, guys. Watch out for some more content coming this week. Tune in next week for our uh, next stream prior to the leaderboard. And uh, we'll see you again. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and... Peace out, guys.